We have organized our code with an area where adjustable parameters are defined. Putting them all in one place makes them easy to find and therefore easy to change. However, it is still necessary to view, understand and edit the scenario's code in order to make a change. Presentation provides a way to display such parameters in the graphical user interface. This allows users unfamiliar with experimental programming to configure your experiment. Even for experiment authors or users technical enough to make the changes, the ability to change values in the GUI instead of editing code can still be advantageous. We call such values set up in the GUI experiment parameters. The variable repeats controls the number of trials of each type. Let's start by making a corresponding experiment parameter. Experiment parameters set up for the current experiment are displayed on the Parameters tab. To add new experiment parameters, open the Advanced Parameter Editor. The Advanced Parameter Editor provides options to manage parameters from multiple scenarios in the same experiment and for predefined sets of values called configurations. For now, we will ignore these complications and only set up parameters for the All Parameters parameter set and the default configuration. Our scenario will have access to all of the parameters. We will get back to configurations later in this tutorial. To add a parameter, first choose a type. The number of trials of each type should be an integer. However, Note that you can make parameters of all the basic types and also the main stimulus types which involve selecting stimulus file names. After selecting a type, click on Add Parameter. The new parameter is placed inside an existing display group which is currently unnamed. Groups allow you to organise multiple parameters so that similar parameters are displayed together. This is most useful for experiments with many experiment parameters. You can rename a group by clicking on the existing name. Groups do not affect anything other than the way the parameters are displayed, so you can arrange them any way you like. So far, the new parameter has a type, and it is visible and editable. Visible means that the parameter will be viewable on the parameters tab of the main presentation window. Editable means that the value may be changed from the Parameters tab. Temporary means that before a scenario that uses this parameter is run, a dialog appears allowing the user to edit the value which is then used for that run only. The experiment parameter name may be any string value and can include spaces. This allows you to use names that are friendlier than a PCL variable name would be. Let's name our parameter trials per type. The description can help a person changing the value understand what the value means, so it is recommended though not required. Next we can set the value. You may optionally define a range of values that are allowed. Presentation will not allow the experiment to even start if values violate this restriction. In addition to helping you avoid having to check that a value is OK in your code, defining a range may also guide the user as to what type of value is appropriate. In this case, the value should be any number greater than zero. We can write this restriction using a special range format. See the documentation for more information about setting ranges. Closing the Advanced Parameter window, we can now see this parameter on the Parameters tab. Clicking on the parameter allows setting the value only. Experiment parameters and their values are stored in the main experiment file, along with all the other experiment settings. Now that we have set up an experiment parameter, we need to access its value from our scenario. This is done using the PCL type Program Parameter Manager. Like the types Terminal and Program Stimulus Manager, there is only one Program Parameter Manager object, which is referenced by the predefined variable Parameter Manager. 
Note that the methods for this type are mostly ways of accessing parameters of various types. For the trials per type parameter, we will need the getInt method. In our code, all we need to do is assign the value returned by the parameter manager to our variable repeats. The string provided to this method is the name of the experiment parameter, which must match exactly. If this argument does not match, the scenario will abort at that point. Running the program now, we see that the number of repeats is given by the experiment parameter value. You can confirm this by changing the value on the parameters tab and running again. Note that there is still only one of each practice trial. Typically, setting up experiment parameters is one of the last things you will do when creating an experiment. During development, it may be cumbersome to switch between tabs when testing various settings. However, note that from the beginning we have programmed our experiments so that adjustable parameters can be changed from a single location or variable value. This makes it easy to add experiment parameters. In some cases, values that you may want to adjust will appear in the SDL part of the scenario. For example, the value assigned to the font size SDL parameter controls the size of the fixation cross text. Recall that SDL is not a programming language, so we can't use the same approach as for PCL. Instead, a special syntax is provided for inserting the values of experiment parameters into SDL, but only for the basic types. First, let's create another parameter for this size. Now, back in our scenario, we can insert this value in SDL using the text xparam followed by the parameter name string in parentheses. We can now run to see the effect of changing values from the parameters tab. Let's add one more parameter to illustrate two more features of experiment parameters. This parameter will control whether practice trials are run or not. In our code, we can use the value of this parameter with an if statement to conditionally show the practice trials. Suppose that practice trials are generally always shown, but occasionally they need to be skipped. You can of course change the value on the parameters tab. However, note that these values are stored when the experiment is saved, and you may not want to make such a change permanent and risk unintentionally skipping practice trials in the future. In this case, you can make this parameter temporary. Now, whenever we run this scenario, a dialog is displayed allowing us to change this parameter. If you select to change the value, the new value will only be used for that run and not affect the permanent value.
This also has the effect of forcing the experimenter to think about whether they want practice trials or not. Another possible approach is to use a configuration. A configuration is a complete set of values for all experiment parameters used in an experiment. Here we will use configurations for the simple case of controlling the practice trials. However, in general configurations can be set up to result in quite different behaviour where multiple experiment parameters differ between configurations. You can create a new configuration on the Parameters tab as well as on the Advanced Parameter window. Select New Configuration in the drop-down box and enter a name for it. Now, when looking at each parameter, we see a Use Value from Default Configuration checkbox. This allows you to only enter values for parameters which should differ from the default configuration. In addition, if a parameter uses the default configuration value, changing the value in the default configuration will also affect that configuration. We will uncheck this box for the Show Practice Trials parameter and make it false for the new configuration. Now that we have more than one configuration defined, a box appears on the main tab which allows you to select which configuration to use. You can change this selection and run the scenario to confirm that practice trials are shown or not accordingly. Note that the configuration selection on the main tab is stored with the experiment. If you change the selection and quit presentation, you will be prompted to save the changes or not. Also note that this selection can be changed on both the main tab and the parameters tab. In this use case, it is important that the experimenter make sure they are running the correct configuration. There are additional experiment parameter features relevant in more complicated use cases. For example, you can include the same scenario multiple times in the same presentation experiment with different experiment parameter values each time. For complete information on experiment parameters, see the documentation.